Hello, my name is Yasmin Bruton, and I am here to bring the most up-to-date scientific research on feeding young children from the experts straight to your table. Join me today as I walk through what we know about young children's appetites and the things that parents and caregivers can do to help keep children's eating habits on track. How much control should adults have in children's eating? Child feeding expert Ellen Satter talks about a division of responsibilities in feeding. The idea is that both adults and children have responsibilities when it comes to feeding and together they can create the right balance for healthy appetites. Adults really should take the lead in deciding what, when, and where eating takes place. First, the what's. This means making decisions about what foods are purchased and are available in the home and at school. Having healthy eaters starts with choosing the foods that we want our children to eat. Next is when. Young children have small tummies that require eating more often than we do as adults. But at the same time, the national statistics show that snacking has gone to an extreme for many U.S. children in recent decades. Like all aspects of caring for young children, structure and yes, timing are the keys. For preschool age children, regular mid-morning and mid-afternoon snacks are appropriate. More frequent snacks can lead to grazing, where children start eating more of their calories from snack foods and less of other, often more nutritious foods at meals. This also can happen when snacks are offered too close to meals. Research shows that when children eat or drink just before lunch or dinner, they actually eat less at the meal, and it is usually less of the foods they like the least. So you guessed it, snacks too close to meals means that kids will eat fewer vegetables at the table. Finally, adults are in charge of where eating takes place. Probably the most important where decision that adults make is whether children eat in front of a TV. In food marketing, uh, eating is often not about uh, responding to hunger and fullness cues. Yeah, you're supposed to eat because it's fun, uh, because it's cool to eat certain things, uh, not necessarily um, because it has anything to do with uh, being healthy or unhealthy or hungry or full. We've talked a lot about the responsibilities that adults have when feeding kids, but what role do children play? Children's role in eating is to decide how much they want to eat. Children will get the calories they need when they are encouraged to listen to their body's hunger and fullness cues. Well, the research shows that very young kids are really good about figuring out how much they want to eat. Um, they know when they're hungry, they usually know when to stop. Um, we see that in babies when they're done drinking a bottle, you know, they'll push it out of their mouths. Um, they have some way of signal signaling um, that they're ready to stop. Um, the research shows that some shift occurs right around age four or five, um, where it seems like external influences a parent um, telling a child to finish what's on their plate. Um, a teacher may be saying, you know, do you want more? Or maybe you should have a little bit more. Let's talk about vegetables. At some point during the meal, we realize that everything else is being eaten, but not the vegetables. So what do parents and caregivers often say? Jesse, I need you to finish your broccoli. I don't want any more. Well, you're not getting any dessert if you don't finish your broccoli, bud. You and I both know that it is tempting to make those deals at the table because they usually work, right? But studies show that these pressures will distract children from listening to their body's cues. Let's try this again in a way that helps keep children's appetites on track. Jesse, are you finished with your dinner, babe? Um, my tummy's full. Okay, good. It's good that you know your tummy's full. How about I put the rest away and if you want some later, you can have it. The opposite of pressuring can have the same effect. Making foods off limits have been shown to make yummy foods even more appealing to kids. Can I have a cookie? Aiden, you eat too many cookies. You're gonna have to have a cracker. Let's try this again. Can I have a cookie? You can choose a cookie today. You want it now or do you want it for dessert? Now. I'll go for it, bud. <laughs> so here are the key points. Start by making your cupboards and countertops filled with the foods you would like children to eat. Offering children energy-rich foods in too large of portions can override children's hunger and satiety cues, causing them to eat more at meals. Offer foods at regularly scheduled snacks and meals. If children drink juice or eat snacks too close to mealtime, they will eat less of the foods they like least on their plates, which is typically fruits and vegetables. Talk to children about hunger and fullness at the table. This helps children make connections between their cues and eating. So caregivers um, really focusing kids on listening to their bodies with questions as simple as, um, 
what does your tummy feel like? Um, if you can see inside your tummy, would it be full? Would it be empty? And just really using these questions to have kids really think more about what their bodies are saying, as opposed to thinking about, it's time to eat, you will eat, regardless of whether you're hungry or not. Let children know that it is up to them to decide how much is enough. Reassure them that it is okay not to finish everything on their plates. It's important to start early in allowing kids uh, the space to tell us if they're hungry or full, uh, to provide them with the foods that we want them to eat, um, allow them to explore those foods, um, you know, really set the constraints, but allow uh, the child to make the decisions about um, how much and whether to eat in a particular context. Thank you for watching, and remember, eat well and be well. And if you would like more information on this topic, please visit www.eextension.org.